everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I'm sharing six new farmhouse decor DIYs that are all super easy to do and also affordable. Today's video is also a collaboration which I'll let you know a little bit more about later on in the video. If you guys enjoyed today's video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. Now let's get right into today's projects. For the first DIY today, I'm using this scrap piece of wood and it is seven inches by one and a half inches. And I first started by painting it with the Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. I did one coat of this paint and once it was dry, I then used my folk art chalk paint in the color castle on a Dollar Tree stencil brush. And I very lightly dry brush this color over top of the plaster color to give this piece a rustic distressed look. Next, I'm using this burlap ribbon from Dollar Tree and I'm cutting it down so that it will fit on the front of my wood. I had to cut it down on both sides and then also I made it a little bit thinner and then I frayed out all of the edges of the burlap ribbon. Then it was time to attach the ribbon to my wood and I used a little bit of hot glue on both ends of the ribbon to secure them into place. In this project, I'm also using these Scrabble letters. These ones came from Dollar General and I'm spelling out the word farmhouse. Once I have it all centered in place, I then started to hot glue each letter back down. Next, I'm creating my legs that go on this wood piece. And for that, I'm using these little finial caps from Hobby Lobby. This, I'm only gonna show you how I make one leg, but I used a smaller finial and then one that's a little bit larger than that. And I hot glued the two tops of those together. And then once I have one of the legs formed, I then hot glued that leg onto the bottom of my wood piece. And I did that obviously for two legs. And then here, I'm just, painting the legs and that is with my folk art chalk paint in the color castle and I did one coat of paint for each leg. Then once those were all dry I wanted them to have a little bit of a distressed look so I took my plaster colored paint on a small paintbrush and I just really lightly painted this color just randomly over the legs so that they kind of matched the rest of the piece and had a nice distressed rustic look. Here is my farmhouse sign all finished. This one was really easy to create and what I love about this one is it's a little different than anything that I've seen. Now moving right on into DIY number two. For this one, I'm using two unfinished wood corbels that I picked up from Lowe's. They are seven inches and I paid $5.68 for each one. And what's nice about these is they have the hooks already on the back even though I'm not gonna be using them today. I first started by painting each corbel with the Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster and I only did one coat of paint for each corbel. Once they were all dry, I am gonna be trying to create a really chippy look to them. So I'm taking an old candle and I'm rubbing the wax from the candle all over the corbel where I want to have my paint chipped. So like I said, I wanna have these really distressed and chippy and this is gonna give me the look that I want. Once I had the wax all rubbed on over top of that plaster paint, I then started painting my folk art chalk paint in the color Castle, and I did two coats of that over top of the wax, and again, for both corbels. After that castle color dried, I'm then using some packing tape and I'm placing it over top of my corbel and I am gonna be working in sections. So right now I'm just taking one piece of tape over top of an area and then I pressed it really well on the corbel and peeled it back. And as you can see, it's giving me this really nice chippy effect. I normally use duct tape when I'm doing this method, but I did not have any, so I'm using this packing tape and it's actually working really great. So as you can see here, I'm just working in different areas with different strips of tape and you can use the tape like one or two times before you have to get a new piece of tape. And I did this over top of both of my corbels until I got the nice chippy look that I wanted. Then for all of the areas that I couldn't really reach with the wax, I just took a piece of sandpaper and sanded the castle color off and just dressed it a little bit that way. 
And here are my corbels all finished. I chose to just leave mine as an accent decor piece, which I've seen on a lot of magazines and stores. But if you wanted to hang them, you could because they do have a hanger on the back. I was able to create mine for just about $11. Before we get into the next project, I do want to talk about today's collaboration. It is with Liz from Liz Moore Decal and Decor. If you guys have not checked out her channel, you're missing out because she is so super talented and has so many great DIY over on her channel. She is going to be doing some farmhouse DIYs today, so make sure to check her video out. I will have a link to it down in my description box. And another great thing about Liz is she does have her own shop where she sells craft kits, and they are all so super cute, and I will have a link to her shop in my description box as well. Now moving into the third DIY for today, I'm gonna to be creating a picture frame and I'm using this little sign from Dollar Tree and I'm starting by just ripping off the little metal part that's on the front and I am gonna be using this so I'm just gonna be setting it aside for now. Then I took my drill and I drilled a hole in the very top of the sign. The front of this piece had a little sign on it and I tried to use my hair dryer to get it heated up and peel it off, but it did not work. So I ended up having to use some 60 grit sandpaper to sand that off. Once it was all sanded off, I then used my folk art chalk paint in the color Castle and I painted this entire piece with that color and I did two different coats of paint. Just like the last project I did, I wanted this piece to have a really chippy look, so I'm using that same candle and I'm rubbing the wax all over this entire piece to give me that chippy effect that I would like to have. After the wax was all on, I then painted my Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster over top and I only did one coat of this paint. After the paint was all dry, I then started using my tape and I just pressed it on and then peeled it back to chip off all of that top layer of paint. For this project, I'm also using this mini wooden candlestick holder and then wooden finial. These both came from Hobby Lobby and I'm painting them both with that Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster and I did one coat of paint for each piece and I'm also using one of these three inch wooden discs. This is from either Lowe's or Home Depot but I know that they also carry these at craft stores like Michael's and Hobby Lobby and I'm just painting this one with that same plaster color paint. After the plaster color was all dry, I wanted to add a little bit of distressing to these, so I used the castle colored paint, and I very lightly painted this around all of those top grooves on the finial, also on the candlestick, and then the three inch disc. I also decided to add these two wooden caps. These are from Hobby Lobby and they come in a pack with a bunch of them in there, and I painted these with that same plaster colored paint. Now it's time to start putting everything together. I'm placing that finial in the hole that I drilled in the very top of my wood piece, and then I'm using a little bit of hot glue at the bottom of it before I start pressing it all the way down, just so it's a little bit more secure. And then I place hot glue on the bottom of the candlestick and place that on top of my wood disc. Then I took that metal piece that I took off in the beginning and I'm reattaching it using some small nails that I had laying around and I'm just nailing those in with my hammer. And then I'm also hot gluing the wood caps that I painted with the plaster color over top of those nails. I then wanted those to have a little bit of that distressing on them so I just painted some of that castle color right over top of them. For the last step, I needed to attach my candlestick to the top of my wood piece, so I just placed some hot glue on the top of the candlestick and centered it on my wood piece. Here is my picture frame all finished. I placed my son's picture in there and I think it turned out so cute. I love the size of this and the chippy look really goes with my decor. Now moving right along into DIY number four. For this one, I'm gonna be using some of these wood beads that I just recently picked up from Hobby Lobby. This was a part of the crafting supplies that they're already putting out for Christmas. Can you believe it? So anyway, I'm using these beads and then I wanted to use a stain, but I didn't really have a gray stain, so I'm using my folk art chalk paint in the color Castle and I mixed some water with it. And then I placed my beads right in the mixture and just rolled them around. I did end up having to add a little bit of water because my paint was still a little bit thick. And then I just kept adding the beads until I 
got them all stained for the amount of beads that I wanted to use. Once I had them all mixed up well, I then laid them out on a towel, but I wanted them to have kind of like a distressed look to them. So I took my towel and I wiped some of that paint stain off of them so that I did have some of that natural wood coming through on the beads. Next, I'm creating my tassels to go on my bead garland. And for this, I'm using some jute and I decided to wrap my jute around this small book that I had. I needed something to wrap my jute around and I was gonna do my hands, but my hands are pretty small and my tassels wouldn't have been long enough. So I ended up just using this book, but you can really use anything that you want just to hold your jute in place while you're wrapping it. And I did mine about 20 to 25 times around the book. And then once I was all done, I just pulled the jute off of the book and it looks like this here. And then I took another piece of jute and I'm just tying that in a knot around the very top of my little roll or strings of jute that I have here. I'm then leaving those two ends of that piece of jute that I just tied around upward and then I'm gathering the rest of them at the bottom and cutting them. I'm then flipping those the opposite direction and then I'm going to be cutting them just so that they are a little bit shorter but also all even. I'm then holding that piece and I'm holding it about an inch down from the very top and you can see that there's a little loop here. And then I'm taking another piece of jute and I'm wrapping it around about an inch down. As you can see, the loop and the hole is still there. I did it about 10 times and then I tied a knot with my jute and then I cut those two little ends of the jute off. Next, I'm taking another piece of jute, and this is gonna be the one that I string all of my beads on, and I'm placing the end of that jute through the hole that's in the top of my tassel, and I'm tying that in a knot, and I'm leaving one side of the jute about a couple inches long, and I'm leaving that on, I'm not cutting that off. Then my really long piece, I'm now stringing all of my beads on. I started with this gray color, and then I took this natural color bead that's just a little bit smaller than the gray one and strung that on. Then I did another gray one, and I just kept alternating between the two color beads and the two different sizes until I got as many beads as I wanted to use strung on my jute. When I got to the very end and I had all of my beads strung on, I then was ready to attach my second tassel. And then I took the end of that jute that I had all of my beads strung on and I put it through the loop or through that hole on my second tassel. And then I tied it as close as I could to the very last bead in a knot. I then cut my jute, but I left about an inch of it out, and then I strung that piece up through the bottom bead, and I did the same thing with the leftover jute on the other side. And this is what my bead jute garland, or <laughs> bead garland looks like. I think it turned out really cute, and I really love the colors with my decor, and you can really switch it up and choose whatever color or stain to go with your decor. And now for the fifth DIY today. For this one, I'm using this pack of wood disc from Hobby Lobby. It's from the Woodpile brand and it comes in a pack of four and I'm using all four of them today. I'm painting all of them with my Waverly paint in the color plaster. I'm also using this pack of stencils from Dollar Tree and I needed to have them all separate so I just used my scissors and cut them all so that they are separate. I'm taking one of my stencils, this Be Brave one is the first one I'm doing, and I'm placing it in the center of my disc that I painted, and then I'm using painter's tape around all four sides to hold it into place. But I want my wreath and my words to be a different color, so I'm first putting some painter's tape over the words so I don't accidentally paint those a different color. And then I'm using my folk art paint in the color Sage Shadow on a Dollar Tree stencil brush to stencil that paint on. Then once it's dry, I'm removing the painter's tape from my words in the middle and then I'm placing painter's tape over top of the wreath that I just painted on so that I don't get any of the paint that I'm painting the words on my painted wreath. For the words, I'm using my same Dollar Tree stencil brush, only this time I'm using my castle colored paint. Once that paint was dry, I then removed the painter's tape from my entire piece. 
I continued those same steps with the other three discs and the other three stencils. And then for each one, I wanted to add a little bit of distressing. So I used my Castle Color chalk paint on a small paintbrush and I painted that around the edges of all of my circles and then a little bit on the front. I'm also using these but magnetic buttons from Dollar Tree and these are gonna be magnets. So I am just going to be placing a little bit of hot glue on the back side of each one of my discs and then adding two magnets to the back of each one. I thought that this was a really cute idea to just add a little bit of a farmhouse cuteness to my refrigerator. I am just showing you what they look like finished here on my table. I actually couldn't film them on my refrigerator because it's stainless steel and the reflection was just really bad on camera. But this is what they look like and they turned out really cute. Now moving into DIY number six, for this one today, I'm using some different pieces of scrap wood. These are all from Hobby Lobby. Four of them are seven inches by one and a half, and then two of them are seven and a half inches by one and a half. For the two longer pieces that are seven and a half by one and a half inches, I'm painting those with that castle color chalk paint. I did one coat of paint on both longer pieces of wood. Then for all of the pieces of wood that are seven inches by one and a half inch, I painted those with the plaster color chalk paint from Waverly and I just did one coat of paint. Once all of the paint was dry and all of the plaster colored ones, I dry brush the castle color over top of them to give them a distressed look. Once I had them all painted and distressed, I started hot gluing all of my plaster color pieces of wood together. I just placed the hot glue on the side of one of the pieces of wood and then I just pressed another one together until they were all glued together. Then for my bottom piece, I just hot glued that on as well. I placed hot glue in the center of the piece of wood and then placed my five white ones on top and then I realized I probably should not add my top piece on just yet until I use my stencil. This stencil came from a pack of stencils from Joanne Fabrics but I think they have it on Amazon and I'll try to have it linked down below but I'm only going to be using the words that were in that stencil so I just cut them out so that they could fit onto all of my pieces of wood nicely and then I used some of my painters tape around all four sides to hold my stencil into place. The color I'm using for my stencil is from Folk Art and it's the color Rich Black and I'm using my Dollar Tree stencil brush to apply the paint. Once the paint was all dry, I then removed my stencil and all of the painter's tape. Then I added my last piece of wood. I hot glued it to the very top of the plastered colored pieces and then I wanted to add some detail to this piece so I'm stringing a piece or I'm stringing a bead onto a piece of jute and I tied two knots to hold the bead on the piece of jute and it's just a very small natural colored bead and then I'm using one of these larger beads that I stained earlier in the video and then another smaller wooden bead and I'm just tying a double knot to hold all of the beads into place. And then I'm just taking those beads and stringing them so that they're on the front of my sign at the very top of all of my words. And I tied it in the back because my jute was long enough to do that. And then I just hot glued it to hold my jute into place. And here is my Happiness is Homemade sign all finished. It was really easy to do and I think it turned out super cute. I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, I hope that you will consider subscribing. And please be sure to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of my future videos. And don't forget to go check out Liz and see what farmhouse DIYs she created. All of her information will be in my description box below. Thank you so much for watching.